coming up next on the Apostolic Connection. You can be a fresh water walker and still be overcome by the waves. And the Bible says when he saw the wind and the waves, he beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, help me. That man that lost that axe head cried out, Master, I need something. The worst thing you can do is to lose your handle on God and become the phony church member that everything is all right. When you realize you're draining your joy, you need to yell out, Master, I need help. Master, I'm not going to go patty cake. I'm not going to go through some kind of church thing. I've got to have a touch this Sunday morning.
what's going on about it.
nails in his hands, nails in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head, and not a mumbling a word, and you stay there, and I won't forget what you gave up for me. And Kings chapter 6 and verse number 1 it says and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha behold now the place where we dwell is too straight for us let us go we pray thee unto Jordan and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and he answered go ye and one said be content I pray thee and go with thy servants and he answered I will go so he went with them, and they went to and they went and came to Jordan, and they cut down wood. 
And as one was filing a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. The man of God said, Where fell it? He showed him the place. He cut down a stick, cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand, and he took it. This entire story here is a story about restoration. It is a story about restoration. We know that this young man had a name. We don't know what his name was. But we know that this young man had something that I believe that many people in this room have. And that is a desire to work for God. A desire to work for God. He was a son of the prophet, one of the sons of the prophet. He had a desire. He wanted to be a worker. He had a desire to do something for God. You know, that's so good today that we have a desire to do something for God. We know that he borrowed an axe and he was working on building a Bible school, a place where men could hear the Word of God. We know that this desire had him working this desire had him working. And not only that, but he even borrowed because he didn't have the means of affording an axe, so he borrowed an axe. He's a worker with a desire, working with something that is simply borrowed. It's not mine. It's simply been given to me. I think about you and I having the good Baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's not ours. It's only been lent to us. It's ours only because He let us borrow it to do the job that we need to do. But we know that while this young man was doing a good thing, an accident happened. The axe head came off and fell into the nearby Jordan. And the man cried out, Master, Master. The first thing out of his mouth when he lost his axe head was Master. But in reading this the other day, so strong compelled by God, the Spirit spoke to my heart and said, the accident was not caused by the axe head. It was caused by the handle. There was nothing wrong with the axe head. What was faulty was the handle. The handle was what caused the axe head to come loose. And I couldn't help but think of you and I with the axe head of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing wrong with the axe head. There's nothing wrong with God. Could somebody help me? Praise the fact today that there's nothing wrong with our God. There's no defects in our God. In Him there is no fault. Would there be anybody willing to shout to the fact that our God is powerful. Our God is almighty. That there is no fault with our God. The fault was with the axe handle. That's the fault. That's the weakness of it. And the scripture says, and you just have to indulge me a little bit, but everything that, that goes on in the Bible, if we will pray, God gives us understanding. The scripture says that Elisha cut 
down a stick and threw it into the water after the axe head. The axe head is by nature on the bottom of the river. He cut down a stick and threw it in. And when he cut down the stick and threw it in, something miraculous happened to the axe head. It floated from the unseen bottom to the seen top. Not only that, to a place to where he could reach and get it. And I prayed and I asked the Holy Ghost to give me understanding. And he said he cut down a new axe handle. What was thrown into the water was a new handle. And when he got a new handle, the axe head got reconnected because he got a new handle. So I'm here to tell us all today, nobody's excluded. Pastor is in this group. Singers are in this group. From time to time, we've got to get a new handle for the axe head. Just because the axe handles wore out doesn't mean the axe head is no good. We got to go back and get our shout. We got to go back and get our victory. We got to go back and get. We all get wore out, we all get a little loose. We all get a little loose. Nobody. You know Simon Peter. Simon Peter. Was in a storm of his life. And Jesus come walking on the water. And Jesus said, be not afraid. It is I. Be not afraid. Why he said it, I don't know. But Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me walk on the water to you. And you know what Jesus said? Come on. Come on. What must it felt like, Sister Jeter? Number one, some more faith had to be in him to leave a boat and go to the water. But something said, I would rather be on the water than in the boat. I'd rather be on the water than in this boat. I would rather be on the water with Jesus than in that boat. And so he took that first step and it was solid. And he took the second step and it was solid. And he went walking on the water. But boy, wouldn't it be something if the miracle ended there? But it doesn't end there. Because you can be a fresh water walker and still be overcome by the waves. And the Bible says when he saw the wind and the waves, he beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, help me. That man that lost that axe head cried out, Master, I need something. The worst thing you can do is to lose your handle on God and become the phony church member that everything is all right. When you realize you're draining your joy, you need to yell out, Master, I need help. Master, I'm not going to go patty cake. I'm not going to go through some kind of church thing. I've got to have a touch this Sunday morning. I've got to have a touch this morning. Beginning to sink. Lord, help me. And the Lord took him by the hand and lifted him up. You know, the man in 2 Kings got help by hollering out, Master. Peter got help by hollering out, Lord, help me. And this one is where I, I'm absolutely stunned. After Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights,
and was tempted of the devil. Matthew 4.11 says, Matthew 4.11 says, And the angels came and ministered to him. Now you listen to Pastor today. If the God-man had angels to come and help him get a handle, we are nothing but fools to believe that we don't need him to come and help us get a handle. For more information about the Apostolic Connection or First Apostolic Church of Maryville, Tennessee, visit our website at factv.org.